Whether you are friend or foe, whether you fight for the dark or the light side, whether you're a little shiny droid or a human being, heck, it doesn't even matter if you're an ugly hut or a little chubby Ewok. All that matters is the fact that every single one of you is just as excited for this game as I am. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Combat Wombat, and welcome to part two of the Beta Bounty. Now, if you missed part one, which was released yesterday, you might want to check out the link that I'm putting in the, in the video right now. What we did yesterday was we took a closer look at the Galactic Republic and their character creation setup. And what we're going to do now, and I certainly don't want to waste any more time, is we are going to check out the Empire side. And, uh, well, due, due to the fact that there are only three new and exclusive species that you haven't seen in the first video, we are also going to check out the four classes that are available to the player. So yes, this video will be partially divided into two halves, so, and make sure to check out the description below so you'll find links to every single part and a little more info on what is going on here. And without further ado, we are just going to kick it off right here, right off the wombat, and we'll check out the first new species, which is the Sith Pure Blood, as you can see right there. Yes, needless to say, nothing has changed from the Republic side. There's still your info tab at the top, and then your species and class symbols down here. And yep, that's about it. So let's see what the Sith has got to offer. So, male and female. Now you'll see what a Sith is capable of. Oh, look at that. Holy crap. That is one badass tentacle man. Okay, so... Uh, what we're going to do with the first one is we're going through all the body types and all heads and scars and hairstyles whatsoever and um, yes so you get a, a very nice overview and you'll see just everything that is in the game if you have missed say the hairstyles because the hairstyles are pretty much the exact same that you can also find with the uh, humans or um, yeah, I don't know, the Maralukas or whatever. And uh, so yeah, we're just going through them once. And then I'll just refer to them with the other races. Which makes sense, I suppose. Okay, so there's your uh, four body types. The scrawny one. And the athletic build. The muscular, angry, badass guy. And then there's your little chubby hubby. Yes, we shall stick for, uh, we shall stick to this one for now. Right, so, heads. Now, obviously, those heads are a little bit different to the, the usual heads because, well, <laughs> because of the tentacles, as you can see. Okay, apparently, they're are some versions without the tentacles, which is a nice feature. If you're not so much into tentacles and weird Japanese animes, I suppose. Look at that. Does that change too? It does! Very nice. So, there you go. Your neck changes just as well. Uh, yeah, we'll just stick with this hat for now and take a look at the scars real quick. Right, nothing new as you can see, uh, just the same stuff you find with all the other races. Eye colors, those are probably going to be species specific. Wow, species specific, species specific. Holy crap. Very nice choices. Holy. It's one badass looking dude. Not gonna lie. Very nice. Jewelry, of course. Where would we be without 
weird golden rings and piercings all over our body. Oh, look at that. This one just climbed out of 300. Hair. Oh, okay, so they get the the usual hairstyles. Just what you would expect. Or not. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. And the hair colors. All kinds of reds and browns, as far as I can tell. Black, of course. And the skin color. Let's see here. Oh, that is red. Look at how he's blending in with the background. Holy shit. Okay, so there's all your tones of red and orange. Yes, let's just randomize a little bit. Nice things going on, as you can see. All kinds of stuff. Let's check out the female. Defy me, and it will end badly. I am liking your accent. Body types. And heads. Let's change the hairstyle for this one real quick. Yeah. So, no tent. Oh, never mind. Tentacles. But not as excessive and massive and overwhelming, I guess. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay. It looks very spacey. Space ish. Whatever, you know what I mean. And the scars are probably just the same as, yeah. The males got the same, so. Okay, and eye color. To be expected, look at that intense yellow. Holy shizzle. I'm loving it. It's very nice. I'd like to zoom in even more, but I, I can't, unfortunately, so. Okay, Jewel, did that change anything? I don't know. I think it did, did it? Oh, oh, okay, it did. Oh, very minimalistic. Cosmetics, obviously. That's almost war paint. That's, that's no makeup anymore, seriously. <laughs> Which I guess is okay. Seeing as though those are the bad guys, there's, oh my god, there are going to be so many people that are going to hate me right now. The, the dark side, if that makes more sense, yes. Hopefully. Hairstyles, just the same as with all the other races. Now, I don't think it would be a bad idea to have different kinds of hairstyles for all the species. I'm not saying that all of them would have to be exclusive, but just like one or two, three special kinds just to, you know, kind of stand out a little bit. If the evil devilish red color of your skin isn't enough yet. Okay, hair color, just real quick. Red, red, dark red, darker red, brown red, 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 and skin colors. There you go. Some random stuff. She was looking evil. They're all looking evil. Nobody's smiling here. Seriously, what's up? What happened to you guys? That one looked like a lizard. Wow. Very intense. Alright, so that was number one. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the next one and I believe we shall do that with the Inquisitor and the Rotataki. There we go. Now those I believe only have white skin if I remember correctly. Just so we'll see here real quick. Start with the male. 
There you go. And uh, body types you've seen, so let's see if the head... Obviously those heads are a little bit different since they don't have tentacles. I take those are just the... The standard ones, so. Okay, scars you've seen, complexion. I like how they like integrate all kinds of stuff. You, whether it be uh, makeup or veins and arteries or there's signs of age or dirt, all kinds of stuff. So it's really, really, it's literally adding complexion, which is a good thing. Yeah, look at that. Look at what, oh, like, only one change does to your character. That's impressive. Very nice. Okay, so, wait, are there three eye colors? There's light blue, uh, not so light blue, and dark grayish blue. Okay. Okay, I can live with that. Ob obviously, there's a whole lot of blue and gray and white going on here, so. Jewelry. Nice. <laughs> Hello, Torero. Um. Okay. Now that is minimalistic. Right. Oh, nice stuff. Nonetheless. Pretty cool, actually. And they got their tats, too. And, of course, those are, uh, happen to be blue. Uh, I mean, obviously, seriously. Who am I to expect anything else? And, as far as I can tell, there is no color slider, so they will remain blue. Seriously, if you, like, if we could change his skin color, we could so go ahead and create one of the, the, the badass guy from 300. That would be epic that. Very nice. Some random dudes. All kinds of stuff. Right, and the females. Now that wasn't so bad, was it? No, absolutely not. And I'm liking everything I'm seeing here. Look at that. It's probably complexion and scars and color and piercings and just all kinds of stuff. And look at that, she doesn't even get makeup. Too bad. Too bad. Okay, let's take a look at the default heads. Scars you've seen, complexion. Oh, this is probably where the makeup comes in. Or not. Those are badass. It's either war paint, face paint all over the place, or nothing. Oh, there you go. A little bit of rouge. Yes. A little more female. Thank you. Okay, eye color. Huh. Eye colors. The... All three. Jewelry. Now there's probably even some kind of lore background why they only can, why they can only have three eye colors, and I apologize for not knowing that. Needless to say that if there's anything anything wrong I'm telling you guys, just go ahead and let me know, seriously. Okay, so there's lip color changing. I saw that. I don't even know why I'm so concerned about their makeup quality, their makeup choices. They don't even have hair, so I don't think they care too much about their makeup, which is probably a wrong assumption. Don't just, just forget what I just said. <laughs> well, there you go. The rot dot 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 docky for you. And uh, there's only one more that you haven't seen yet, and that one is just very exciting. And I believe it's called the Chiss, and they're black-skinned. 
black skinned? What the? Seriously. They're blue skinned and they're only blue skinned. They're known for their blue skin and there's only wasting my time. tones of blue. Also with the hair and I believe, yes, there's no eye colors too, so. If you pick a chiss, you're probably going to be blue and red. Looking kind of intense though, like, needless to say, I am loving the Imperial Agent outfit, but that might just be me. Okay, so there we go. Just gonna go skim through those real quick, because you've seen them. Right, and scars you've seen, complexion. Let's see what the, the what this does. Okay, so also the standard stuff. Hair styles just as well. Oh yes. And hair color. Wow! <laughs> Look at me picking these the the absolute best hairstyle to show off hair color. Okay, a little bit better. Okay, so there's gray, black, blue. A little bit of variety, so you're not stuck with all blue. That's a good thing. And skin color. All kinds of blue. Some of them I like, like this one, but some are just very intense, like seriously, maybe just a little bit too much, I don't know. Oh, look at him. I am in love with this character creation, it's absolutely ridiculous, so many choices. Like every single one looks different. It's. <laughs> I just can't get over the... F Seriously, what is this? Body type 4 is just... I don't know. It's... It's interesting. Very interesting. I... It's a little... A little bit sad that you don't have sliders for all kinds of proportions. Because... Like, even if you wanted to go all big stomachy and you know what... Like, big arms and whatever you I mean there's not just the stereotype big guy out there is there I mean some people have smaller heads though or not as humongous thighs I, I don't know well maybe that's just me let's check out the female and then we're done with the species my activities are authorized by Imperial intelligence well if that is not a good information the Annoidant new. Look at her hairstyle. Loving that. Very nice. Very neat. Body types you've seen. Head. Let's go through real quick. There you go. All kinds of nice stuff. Now, the female chis, I believe, look look a little bit better. Maybe that... I don't know. Feels like it. Scars you've seen. Complexion. Now, do those get m any kind of makeup? Don't believe so. All she gets is weird... I don't even know what that is. Like, what What does she have around her eyes? Is that like... Oh, that's Scar, never mind. <laughs> so I probably screw, screwed up the complexion. Let's go back. There you go. A little bit of eyeshadow, a little bit of tint. Oh, look at that. I know we've seen this before, but... So much more intense. Alright. Freckles. Okay, cosmetics. There we go. Yay! So apparently only the Ratataki don't care. All they do is go out and fight people. Which is which is cool. Fine. I suppose. Look at that. Very evil. Hairstyles you've seen. Just the usual. And hair color. Skin colors. And some random loadouts.
Alright, so those are the species you get in Star Wars Little Republic. Uh, just pointing out one more time that if you've missed part one, you should definitely go check that one out because it showed all the other species. So if you're interested in humans or the Twi'lek or whatever, feel free to just click the annotation. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, part two of the so very exciting video is going to pee, to pee, to pee, yes, we are going to pee right now. So everybody take, take a break, take a five, and I'll see you there in five minutes. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not just God. I, I, I swear to God, I'm not drunk and I did not take my medication today, which is probably the problem. Anyways, okay, so in Star Wars The Old Republic, you get to choose between four classes. Now, don't worry, we're going to do this with those four classes here and with the Empire, si the Empire side, but the Republic classes are pretty much mirrors, so you're not really missing out on anything. I mean, they're called differently, and I believe, yes, their advanced classes are, they have different names and titles as well. And their abilities have different names, but that's about it. Everything else, like what they do, and their roles, and their itemization, everything like that, tends to be the exact same. There are a there are some differences, and I'll, I'll point those out to you uh, when it's time. It'll be concerning the bounty hunter and the Imperial agent, as far as I know. Okay, so let's start with the Sith, with the Sith warrior and his Republic, or their Republic uh, counterpart would be the Jedi Knight. Right. So, what we get to do, actually, let's go back and just do it like this. So, we're going to take a closer look at the advanced classes, and I'll say a little bit about them. The uh, basic class. So, what we have here is the Sith Warrior, or if you're Republic, then the Jedi Knight. And once you hit level 10, you get to pick one of two trees that you can then pursue further. Uh, those trees are called your advanced classes and depending on your advanced class your combat role and your um, even your armor proficiency might change as you can see right here. So once you hit level 10 you most definitely have to make up your mind and choose wisely. I believe that there right now in the beta there is the opportunity to change your advanced class but it is only a one-time deal or um, maybe I should say that after the first time you change your AC it will be very very hard for you to change it yet again so you probably should think about what you want to do and maybe even read on the on the internet for just a little while or watch some videos or whatever get stuff down and figure out what you want to play before you choose your AC now hopefully once you reach level 10 the game should be enough, you know, the game should actually accomplish to inform you very well, so it shouldn't be too much of a hassle to pick your AC. Now, as you can see, you get to pick or choose between the Sith Marauder, Marauder, I'm sorry, this is a hard word to pronounce, and the, juggern the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut, wow, I'm not made for this, seriously, I'm sorry. And um, yes, so as far as I know, and as you can see right here, the Juggernaut will be your tank or your damage dealer. So you can either go all tank or damage dealer. One, one more thing I, I should probably mention is that once you pick your AC, which will kind of um, preset your uh, combat roll, you still get to put talent points into three other trees. So uh, while I was talking about the AC system, maybe uh, mentioning the trees was not uh, very intelligent, not very smart, because those aren't really trees. What you get here are only your paths. Maybe path is a better way. So you either go Meridor or Juggernaut, and then 
Once you're Juggernaut, you can go tank or damage dealer or just another kind of damage dealer. So you, you'll get three trees again. Now two of those trees, of those three trees, will be exclusive to your AC. And the third one will be uh, shared between both ACs. So, for example, right here, and I'm, I'm just going to explain this with one example, and then we're just going to, going to uh, move forward and make this a lot quicker with all the other classes. Now, just imagine you picked the Juggernaut. Now, what would happen is, is you would get three trees. One would be ex exclusive to the Juggernaut, I imagine uh, one being the tank tree and one being a specific damage dealing tree. And the third one would be a somewhat utilization, somewhat damage dealing, somewhat PvP oriented, somewhat shared tree that you will share with the uh, Marauder. So if you pick Marauder, I have the hardest time saying that word, holy crap. You would get three new trees or other trees, or say two exclusive new trees and one the same one we just talked about the util utilization damage healing tree that you would then be sharing with the juggernaut so every ac unlocks two exclusive trees and one that is being shared between the two acs wow that was a hard thing for me to go through and to process and talk about it's hard to think about things and uh talk about them at the same time um yeah so, as you can see here, so you get you get to either play a tank and damage dealer or a damage dealer. And that is a loading screen. Now I'm not sure. Oh, of course. Yes. So as you can see, this is beta and beta doesn't mean everything is happy and shiny and great. Now I just, you know, selected a random server right there and obviously there is a lot going on right now. And uh, let's head back into the character creation and just make this a little shorter now. Okay, so there you go. There is your damage dealing tree. tree. You will be using two lightsabers. You're, you will always be uh, dual wielding with this kind of AC. You will wear medium armor and your uh, resource, resource will be rage, which is... If you've played games such as, um, say, World of Warcraft, uh, it's it's pretty much the same. Yeah, and your Juggernaut, he will be your tank or damage dealer, you can choose to do whatever. And you will be playing with one lightsaber, you will be wearing heavy armor, and you'll also be using the rage mechanic. Alright, let's take a look at the Inquisitor real quick. Now with the Inquisitor, you'll be using the Force. Needless to say that the Sith Warrior is always also using uh, Force, the Force mechanic. Or Force spells, so to say. Okay, so the Inquisitor unlocks two or has two AC possibilities. Again, there is your uh, Sorcerer, your magic guy that uses Force to just, you know, shoot lightning at everybody and everything. And then there, there's the uh, Sith Assassin, which is a mid-range melee kind of combat guy. Right, so, the, sor the Sorcerer wears light armor and cloth, as far as I know. He can heal or deal damage. You can go into either or. Obviously, there is a shared tree again, which I believe is called Corruption, I'm not so sure. It focuses on dots, I believe. And yes, as you can see, you are going to use Force, which is the equivalent to mana, really. Yeah. I should probably clarify, the Sith Warrior is not using mana, he is using Rage, but both of those classes are so-called Force classes. Yeah, you, you get the drift. Okay, and the second AC would be the Sith Assassin, and he is a very roguelike, stealthy character. He can uh, tank or deal damage, which is 
which might actually be a surprise to some of you guys. <coughs> I'm sorry. And he can wield a double-bladed lightsaber. Now, the Republic equivalent to this would be the Jedi Counselor, obviously, and um, for the Sorcerer, you would get the Sage, and for the Assassin, you would be, you know, picking the Shadow. So those are seriously, literally, mirror classes. Right. And also, you get to wear light armor, which is really interesting since you can be a tank as well as a assassin or a shadow. So I believe what you get is a buff that gets up, that gets your resistances and your armor up. But don't pin me that pin me down on that one. And then there's your resource, the uh, force again. So yes, also the assassin will be able to shock. There's a couple of things that both both ACs obviously have baseline, so I believe Shock is an ability that both ACs just get right off the bat and they can use all throughout their character progression. Okie dokes, so the Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunter is just a very nice class as well, and he gets two ACs just like everybody else. The Republic counterpart counterpart would probably be or is <laughs> is the trooper so what we get here is either the power tech or the mercenary and on republic side that would equal the vanguard and the commando now the power tag slash vanguard will be your tank or your damage dealer and he will be using one blaster blaster pistol as a bounty hunter and the Vanguard, now there is where uh, things differ just a little bit. The Vanguard, so your tank on the Republic side, he will be using a... I think is... yeah, it is a blaster rifle. So your tank will be wielding a blaster rifle. Both are wearing uh, heavy armor and they're using, using the heat resource. Now, what is very special about the power attack or the bounty hunter and the trooper is their resource system. What they're using is heat and uh, every time you use an ability you build up heat. And obviously at one point you're going to cap out on that heat. So what you have to do then is to either vent the heat, to lose heat again, to you know decrease your heat, or wait and then heat decreases over time just as well. So it's a very nice little mechanic. Uh, I believe that at the at the beginning of the beta, some things were a little bit um, hard to balance with this system. Just just as well with the Imperial Agent and Smuggler Resource System, which I'll talk about just in a little bit. Because obviously, you're also going to be a healer, as you can see here with the Mercenary, and um, it's not very nice to be capped out on your resource in a say emergency when you would probably end up having to heal a buncher, you know something like that so but I th I'm pretty sure they fixed that they got their uh, grab on that and they fixed it properly so yeah we'll see we'll cover that if you if there's anyone who wants to see that we'll take a closer look at that obviously okay so you get the power attack your tank and then you get the mercenary who is either a healer as already mentioned or you can also go as a dual wielding damage dealer. Now the difference here is you will be wielding two blaster pistols instead of only one and the Republic counterpart, the Commando, he will be using an assault rifle. He will not be using two blaster pistols. All of them are using heavy armor though and also the heat mechanic. Right, and this brings us to the very last class of the Empire side, the Imperial agent and this is probably the one that you sh You know less about Just because it hasn't been um, that prominent in the movies and Just to you know kind of get that out of the way as far as I know the Imperial agent story has gotten so much love. It's supposed to be amazing very very epic and um, I'm willing to bet that Bioware probably put in some extra love just to make sure that people felt the 
the desire to also roll an Imperial Agent. As far as I can tell you, you should definitely do it. I mean, seriously, check out those outfits. Just like that should be reason enough. Anyway, so there's your uh, two ACs. And the Republic counterpart will be the Smuggler, which you probably know just just better. Because, um, you know, if Han Solo says anything to you, and it probably should, I mean, it, it even... That's even something I know. Some guy I know. Mm. Then yes, that is the Republic counterpart to the Imperial Agent. Both will have the choice of either going into uh, range damage, which you can see here with the Sniper, or the Gunslinger on the Republic side. Or you, could, you can go into some what close mid-range combat and use your vibro, vibro knife and your blaster rifle or on the Republic side I believe it's a scatter gun you get to to wield as the scoundrel then uh, yeah that would be your choice okay that was a little confusing actually so what you get what you get to do is either play healer or damage dealer from close mid-range as the operative or the scoundrel as the smuggler or you can play a range damage dealer as the sniper or the gunslinger and then you'll be using a sniper rifle or now let me think here real quick i think the gunslinger actually uses he uses two pistols as far as I know, yes. And the smuggler, smuggler also doesn't use the vibro knife. All of them are using medium armor and those classes are using energy as their resource. And um, if you're familiar with other games such as World of Warcraft, uh, then energy should not be a mystery to you. So what you do is you have a certain pool of energy and you can just spend it on certain abilities and then it builds up again. Right, so that is it for today and I'm just going to leave you with the voice acting of all the four classes and that is, um, yes, the grand finale for part two of the Beta Bounty. Looks like it's time for a bloodbath. I will bring the Republic to its knees. I love how you can always find the English accent here and there. Certainly adds a little bit of evil twist. That's not fear I smell, is it? Absolutely not. I suppose I can lower myself to do this. Oh, really? <laughs> well, that's nice. Then again, I, I, I guess you shouldn't be expecting more of an Empire evil being. Just point me in the direction of the action. Bounty hunters set their own rules. Do they now? Now, needless to say, and I already mentioned th this in the previous video, there is no difference between species. There's only a difference in voice acting between the four classes. My activities are authorized by Imperial Intelligence. This should be interesting. Okay guys, that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching part 2 of The Better Bounty and stay tuned for part 3 which will probably depict the uh, starting zones of both the Republic and the Empire. So yes. Uh, just one more thing, if there's any kind of request or any kind of feedback you guys have, be sure to let me know and to send me a private message or an email or Twitter me or do anything you feel comfortable with and I will check it out and make sure that we will get a video of it. Thank you very much and I hope to see you soon.